So let's look at the gauge we have, 0 to 4 just now, right? So I rearrange the table. So 0, 2, 4, put together the first three elements, and 1, 3, 5, the next three elements. Now, when you look at, when you fill out the table, you find that the yellow part with the yellow part add together, still give you the yellow part. For example, 4 plus 4, 4 plus 4 is uh, 2, huh? it's still a yellow number. Okay, so 0, 2, 4, I'm going to color them yellow. This is H. Now, 1, 3, 5, just color the gray. This is actually the 1 plus H. So, if you look at this table, Right, formed by this subgroup. You notice that you have actually a group like this. Addition, modulo 6, first one is 0 plus h, because 0, 2, 4 is just 0 plus h. 1, 2, 5 is 1 plus h. And then, you look at the multiplication table, in this case, which is addition here, you find that they have this kind of structure. You group them, you find that whatever is in 0 plus h, add together is still in 0 plus h. Whatever is in 0 plus h there, add together is still in 0 plus h. Right? And so look, whatever you 1, 3, 5, 1 plus 8, add something with 0 plus h, you find that you always get back 1, 3, 5. 3, 1, 1, 3, 5, all these three numbers only. So this is still 1 plus h. Whatever you add them, this is going to be 1 plus h here. Let me use different color here. I'm going to use blue here because it's easier to see. And if we use 1 plus h and 0 plus h add together, then get this part. Okay, this part. 1 plus h again. Now you see that this part here, 1 plus h. Right? 1, 3, 5, 3, 5, 1, 5, 1, 3, they are all part of 1 plus h there. And lastly, if you add something in 1, 3, 5, 1 plus h, right? Okay, something in 1, 3, 5, add something in 1, 3, 5, what you end up with, you find that you will go and get something in. Two four zero, which is h, or zero plus h. So you get back zero plus h. All right. So you find that you have this kind of structure. And you look at this table. This table looks like a group table, no? A group table. If you if you look at a group table of z two, let's look at consider. The group table of Z2. You'll find that this table is exactly the same as Z2. Under addition, modular, modular 2, 0, 1. Then you find that 0 plus 0 is 0, 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 0 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 0. This kind of table has exactly the same pattern. Z2. So you know that if you take the cosec, you can actually multiply the cosec again, or actually add cosec again to form another group. So cosec add another cosec, add another cosec. They happen that this happen that you add one cosec with another cosec, you get uh, another cosec, still a cosec. And, but this is not always true. Right? It's not. It's not true always. Very often you can add cosine and add cosine, you don't get a cosine again. But this time it's true, this is what we call closure, right? Add cosine 
or some code together, you get end up another code set. This is called close closure. So we satisfy a property of a group here. So we have a pattern of a group in this case. And this is the pattern of a, a group here. So this close set in this case form a group. It's a special one, right? So this coset of H forms a group. It's not true that I always form a group, but happen that this time happened that we have coset and our coset gives you a coset. So we form a group. And in this group we have a notation. You're going to see this later on. It's just G slash Okay, the notation of this we call it G slash H quotient group. Alright, so this is what you can do with this special code set here. You look at the code set the form group here, and it's called quotient group. I found G slash H. So we have a name for this. We call this quotient group. Okay. 